Hey everyone, it's Catherine from 85th and Pine, and today I'm going to start a new video series on Inkscape, and it's going to be learning the basics of Inkscape for laser cutters. So I'm going to be doing multiple videos. Some of them will be shorter, some of them will be longer, but I'm just going to be showing you what I personally use throughout Inkscape that has gotten me where I am today with my laser cutting business. So I hope that's helpful for you. So today we're just going to be starting on just the file menu options. So it might be a little bit of a shorter video, but let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I have Inkscape pulled up right here, and this is what it's going to look at look like when you download and install it on your computer. I believe you go to inkscape.org to do this, and it is a free software program that you can use for graphic designing, editing, creating different files, stuff like that. It's really helpful to use with your Glowforge machine or other laser cutting machine. And a different version similar to Inkscape is Adobe Illustrator, but this Inkscape is a free um, software. That's why I decided to use it. And I've had a lot, of, a lot of good success with it. So I wanna just show you what I use and how it works for me. So like I said, we're just gonna dive into the file menu options today. So if you go to the upper left-hand corner right here in the file menu, you'll see all these different options. I'm just gonna show you the ones that I personally use the most. And like I said, this is what Inkscape looks like when you first pull it up. So you can see this document size right here. It is about eight and a half by 11 inches. So I'm gonna talk about that for just a second. To change this size, which you will need to do for certain reasons. To do that, you're gonna to go to your file menu and go to document properties. From there, a screen will pop up right here. And this is where you're going to change this document size. So the reason you will want to change this size is if you're working on a design or you're editing something on, your, on Inkscape, you will need to change this size so it fits around your design. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it is it required more so if you're going to be selling digital files. So whatever you're creating for that file, it has to be within the limits of this document in order for it to be saved correctly for the person you're selling it to to view it correctly. Otherwise, if it's outside of the limits of this document, it won't save correctly and it won't show up for that person to view. So to do that, you're gonna to go to document properties, like I said. And what I use is the custom size toolbar down here. And I use it in inches, but you can obviously change that if you need to. So right here is where I'm going to change my document size. I personally use 19 by 11 inches because that's the size of the bed of my Glowforge machine. You can do whatever you want. Um, I mostly use 19 by 11 just because I want to see what I'm working with when I'm creating something or editing something. So that's basically the reason why I like to use 19 by 11. But again, if you're creating a certain digital file that's bigger than the 19 by 11 or bigger than whatever document size you have on your screen, you'll just make it as big as you need to. I've created many di different digital files that are much bigger than this document size. So I just make it so that it fits around the file for me. But just to show you 19 by 11, that's how it changed as you can see right here. So that was pretty easy. And then you just X out and it stays that way. And now for Inkscape, you can zoom in and out by using the plus or the minus sign on your keyboard. You can also do that by going to view and zoom, but it takes a lot longer doing it that way. So I just recommend using plus or minus and you can zoom in and out as you please. So to go on to the next options in the file menu, we'll go back up here. So if you need to create a new document, obviously that's where you would click on new. We're already in a new document, so I don't need to do that right now. But if you're working on something and you want to create something else in a different document, that's where you'll need to open a new document. Now, if you need to open an existing document, that's where you will go here to open. And that's going to open whatever file you saved from Inkscape 
previously, and it will pull up for you here. Again, if you need to use Open Recent, which is underneath Open right here, that's where um, Inkscape will show you all the recent items you created on Inkscape if you need to go back and open one of those files. Then if you can go down to save, save as, save a copy, those are clearly um, self-explanatory. So once you're finished making your document or your project, just go ahead and click save, save as. I usually do save as because I'm already working within a document that I that was existing. So I save it as something else. So if I wanted to go to save as, that's where I would click here, type in the file name of whatever I want to save it as and go to whichever folder in your computer you want to save it under. And also you can save it as an Inkscape SVG. That's typically what I do. If I'm selling a digital file, I will change that to a few different options to give my customers different options. So first I save it as my Inkscape SVG, as my original file, but to sell it, I usually save it as a plain SVG. And I also save it separately as a PDF. And finally, I save it separately as a DXF. There's a lot of different files you can save it under. EPS is a popular one as well, but those are the three that I typically use when I'm selling digital files for my customers. But if I'm not selling the digital file and I'm just creating something for myself or whatever the case may be, I just save it as Inkscape SVG. You can save it as a plain SVG if you need to. Then another option in the file menu is import. So that's if you want to import an image that you already have saved on your computer. So if I click on that and I can go into any folder, this is kind of like the open feature, but I use import if I'm importing an image that I just saved on my computer. So if I want to, or a document doesn't have to be an image. So if I want to select this, that's where I'll double click it and it will import whatever I choose. And then finally, one of the last things I use in the file menu is export PNG image. This is if you want to save it and export it as an image, not an SVG or any other type of file that is shown in the save as section. So let's just do a quick um, example. If I want to create text, which is on the left hand side over here, I'll do a separate video on this. But let's just do this for an example. I'm just gonna type in welcome and I'll just make that a little bit bigger so you can see it better. And I'm gonna change the color down here to blue. And let's just say I want to save that as an image if I want to upload a certain image anywhere I want, whether it's my website or whatever it is. So to export it as an image, I'm going to go back to file and export PNG image. And this is where another box will pop up. This is the export box. So it's going to have a lot of different things right here. You don't have to pay attention to this. Just go down to file name and export as. And that's where you're just going to name the file. So we're just going to name it whatever we want and then save it as a PNG that automatically comes up right here. And I'm gonna to go to a file that I already, a folder that I already have in my computer and save it under that folder. So it's just gonna save as, we'll just say it as, save it as a bitmap. And then that didn't export it yet, that just um, saved the name that we chose. So now you're going to uh, click this box down here, close when complete and click export. So that is pretty much all I use under the file menu options. That was just a brief video on just the uh, a few important parts of starting Inkscape. So I hope that was helpful for you. And if you're interested in joining our new Facebook group, please feel free to. It's called Students of the Forge. That is listed in the description box below where we share ideas, projects, anything else you might need help with. And if you're interested in buying your own Glowforge machine, please feel free to use my referral code also listed in the description box below on where you can get money off. Plus I would get credits too, which my family and I truly appreciate more than you know. 
So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.